Hey guys, this is Jeff, Swing Trade Warrior with WarriorTrading.com with another weekly closed swing trade recap video. Uh, this week we took uh, a few trades that we're going to talk about here in some uh, detail. Uh, we were able to make some money this week, so definitely happy about that. And we still have a couple open positions we're carrying over uh, to next week. So uh, without further ado, uh, let's get into this. Now as you guys watch these videos here, uh, if you come across any questions, uh, or issues pertaining to these trades, or you want uh, some general information on swing trading in general, I uh, love to help people out. So just email me, Jeff at WarriorTrading.com, uh, or get a hold of me on Skype at Swing Trade Warrior, and uh, we can talk about uh, whatever it is you guys want to talk about uh, pertaining to trading, preferably. Okay, uh, so the first trade we opened up this week was on Court. Uh, it's Corsep Therapeutics. Uh, this did hit uh, the Swing Long Scanner. <clears throat> the small cap breakout swing long scanner here back on uh, July 27th. Um, we had a nice 4% move to the upside off of the 200 EMA, this yellow line here, and uh, we had a high relative volume move on this day. Um, looking for a long entry here, uh, using the small cap breakout strategy, uh, we want to use an entry uh, over the previous high of day. Um, which would be the day of the alert because we run these scans after hours, right? So we're going to look for an entry over the previous high of day, or in this case, uh, because these two candles here are about the same size, we have a little bit of a higher wick uh, on the other candle. So that tells me that this thing tested $5 here and it failed. $5, uh, it's a mental, uh, whole dollars and half dollars are mental resistance and support areas. And so we know that there might be a little bit of an issue uh, testing that $5 area. And I'm willing to sacrifice five cents from my entry, uh, which would have been uh, 490, uh, 495 uh, if I took it over the high of this candle after the day of the alert. I'm willing to sacrifice a little bit uh, to make sure we can get over that $5 area. So uh, we waited until we got the $5. $5 started breaking, and we got long on the trade. <laughs> We put in a high uh, intraday of 517, but before the day was over, uh, unfortunately, uh, it pulled all the way back and closed just above our entry. Now, uh, we want to see it at least hold our entry, if not continue the breakout. We're definitely looking for trend continuation, right? So in order to get trend continuation, we need a couple things to happen. We need confirmation from volume. We want to see the high relative volume on the day of the alert, and we want to see ascending relative high relative volume on the day of our entry. So we got that, right? We got the high volume alert. Second day, we had more volume. We got a nice push to 517. Unfortunately, um, it just didn't hold up. It came back down, uh, held our entry, stayed in the trade. We gave it another day. Uh, adjusted our stop to low day. Another day we tested a high of uh, 510 or so. Five, yeah, 510. Uh, we couldn't break that high. The volume was still pretty high, uh, but again we closed at 502, uh, just above our entry. We gave it another day, and it popped up to a high of 505. Um, held our entry, and uh, you know when it closed, it's holding that five dollar area really well. But now the volume's starting to taper off. What I do like about this. Uh, this line here. What I do like here is you have this ascending bottom um, starting to form a, uh, a nice wedge here. Uh, we got this kind of uh, this top up. We're not making new highs, but we are making lower lows. Uh, so this could end up going on Monday, but because the strategy that I use calls for instant resolution, um, and I gave it plenty of time, uh, three to four days here in this trade without making money or losing money, it was pretty much a flat trade. Um, we ended up uh, taking it off the table, looking for something more uh, promising. This thing could go over 517, 520, uh, but I'm not going to sit around and uh, watch it come down if it doesn't want to go. The market was good this week and the market was bad this week uh, at different periods, and this thing just hovered at the same area and never wanted to, uh, never wanted to do anything. So another, <coughs> another setup we saw here was on GoDaddy. We were alerted to GoDaddy off my scanner on uh, July 28th, uh, which is right here, okay? So what do we see on July 28th here? We have this big uh, big move up to the upside here. We're testing uh, this resistance area at 27.15, 27.20 or so. We're also trading uh, just under the moving averages at this time, the 20 and the 50 EMA. Okay, and this is important here. Uh, we're consolidating for a long period of time, trading in this range. Uh, definitely looking for a move uh, over the from move uh, over the top 
of the range uh, or you know potential short down below uh, once we got uh, the alert we got the high volume move here you can see this big green bar indicating a lot of volume coming in uh, we set our order at the high of the day of the alert which happened to be 27.35 we got long on this trade spiked up to a high of 27.50 uh, we adjusted our stop to break uh, to the low of day uh, for the day of our entry. Next day, uh, we get candle over candle continuation. See how each candle uh, closes higher than the previous one? That's what we want to see. Uh, we get a nice spike up again. Uh, this time we tested 27.75, and it wasn't until Friday that we ended up getting the big move that we wanted, all the way up to $29. Okay, we scaled out through this trade. It ended up being uh, about a 4%, 5% winner for us. Um, never really against us at any point here. We just had to hold it for a while until it wanted to go. It's testing this long-term resistance area right here. If you look back uh, from May of this year, you can see we tested it, tested it, tested it, tested it, and finally it broke out up and over. Um, you know, but if I zoom out, well, there's really not much more to go here. Uh, back here right after IPO, also big resistance area, sold off after that. So just took a few days uh, for the buyers to get on board, and we pushed through. Uh, with a nice breakout, it was about a point, a point realized, but the total range of the move was about a point and a half, and so uh, it was a uh, it was a nice and clean win. Uh, moving on to the next one from this week, talk about Weight Watchers. Weight Watchers was disappointing. I had high hopes for this setup. Uh, I really liked this trade, and um, unfortunately, it was one that failed us. Um, in spectacular fashion. So what we have here is this uh, pattern. Uh, we get the high, uh, we get the 4% move up here and uh, a high relative volume day. And we have a nice top uh, of resistance here. I already have the line in the blue line. This nice resistance top at 420, uh, which also coincides roughly with the area where the 20 EMA is at. Looking for a move uh, over the top of the previous day's high, that's our entry trigger. Uh, we put in a spike uh, after our entry of uh, just about uh, 4.8% uh, or so. Uh, nearly the 5% move I was looking to take profits at. I had an order out at 4.38. This had a high of 4.36. And uh, it never came back, unfortunately. It started rolling over uh, late Friday afternoon. The market came in. This thing sold all the way off. We ended up stopping out here for a 10, 11 cent loss on the trade uh, after being up on it. Um, Unfortunately, it did not hold the entry, and this resistance level at 420 proved to be uh, too much. Now, Weight Watchers hasn't traded down in this area ever, uh, so it's a light resistance area. But they do have a ton of uh, um, they do have a ton of bad news, uh, as you can see. Uh, they keep getting hit with their earnings suck, and uh, they're still selling off. We're looking for a move here, back up to uh, the four. Where is it at? Right here, the 450 area. Uh, over the top of this high where it's just consolidating in this range, we're looking to get long over the short-term resistance to take out the long-term resistance to move up to $5 at the next uh, next major uh, near-term resistance here. So uh, we did get the break. We did get a 4.8% move to the upside. Unfortunately, I just didn't pull the trigger and sell in time, and it ended up selling off, and uh, uh, we ended up stopping out on it. But it was a good trade while the market was strong. Okay, another setup we took long this week uh, on Friday was Hill. Um, I, uh, Dot Hill, I like this company. I've traded it before. Uh, we got the alert on this uh, on July 30th, and we got long on this trade on July 31st. We have this nice 4% move up. We have a tap of uh, the 20 EMA right here. It pulls back, just closes right below it, and we have a high relative volume move. Next day, we set our order over the previous day's high at 628. We get long on the trade. It pops up to the 50 EMA resistance area. Uh, it pulls back and it closes just above our entry price. And you'll also notice this red line in the background and the green line. These are TAS market boxes um, or TAS boxes. And uh, they're an indicator that help us determine uh, support and resistance levels based off a of proprietary algorithm that calculates price action and volume and all kinds of other fun stuff. So. Uh, we noticed that uh, it indicated a breakout spot here at the 630 area. 
Uh, we got long uh, just over this area and it did pop up for us, but uh, we did hold the area on the close. So now what I'm looking to see is continuation in the same pattern you see here, candle over candle. We want to see the same thing as we move through this next resistance area at the 50 EMA. After that, our price target uh, or range is going to be to about 670 or so. Uh, from previous support back here, it will now become resistance. And if we can get through 670, we'll probably have a good shot uh, up to $7. Okay, we're adjusting our stop in this trade. The stop will now be at the low of day, uh, which was 612. So our stop will be at 611 going forward. And uh, we'll start looking to take profits in about 4 to 5% uh, above our entry. Okay, we like to see that the volume is still strong. Um, it held up on a weak market, even though the market came down very hard, green to red, uh, throughout the day on Friday, uh, this trade did hold up. So I have high hopes for it next week. Uh, another trade we opened up uh, was ORC. Uh, it's ORCID. Um, they are a real estate investment trust, and you can see they have been absolutely hammered to the downside, uh, giving up just about 50% of their uh, market cap here. Um, during the sell-off period. So we got this alert uh, again on Thursday uh, right here on this big 4% move up with high relative volume. Now we set our orders over the top of the uh, uh, over the top of the high of this candle on the day of the alert. The high was 867 so we were able to get long at 870. Uh, if you can tell this is trading in a pretty tight uh, little range right here. Um, once it breaks out of this range, you see that there's a uh, pretty clear sailing up to uh, about $11. So we're long on this trade right now. Uh, again, market weakness didn't really help us uh, push the breakout today. Uh, it did pop up about 15, 20 cents for us at one point, uh, but then it came back down like everything else in the world did at the end of the day. So uh, we're looking for this to continue. We have a tight stop now using the low of day of the day of our entry. Uh, so if it wants to break down and move back lower, that's fine. We'll wait for the setup to come back to us. Uh, but I do like this over nine dollars, uh, like I said, because there is clear sailing uh, back up to eleven. Okay, so those are the trades I wanted to talk about from this week. Uh, I just did the watch list. I ran the scans uh, for next Monday, and uh, there's some definitely uh, there's definitely some good setups uh, out there for Monday. So I'm pumped uh, to get into some more positions. Uh, we'll manage the ones we have and. Uh, I will be back next Friday with a, uh, another swing trade recap video. Again, anybody has any questions, please don't hesitate uh, to ask me. Jeff at warriortrading.com. Have a good weekend, folks.